lowest points of his career, not even close. Next month, John McEnroe will celebrate his 33rd birthday. Now, in the world of pro tennis, if you're 33, I mean, you're history. You might as well be 53. Very few players can really compete at that age. Jimmy Connors is one, Martina Navratilova another, but McEnroe? Come on. After all, he came in ranked number 28 in the world, unseated at the Australian Open. And Friday, he had to face the defending champ, Boris Becker. Surely, it would be a short stay for Johnny Mack. Let's head to Melbourne. As always, don't call me Shirley. McEnroe served brilliantly, frustrating Becker. This time around, McEnroe was a choir boy on the court. It was Becker who had his problems with the officials. That was called long. Boris, not thrilled. How long, what about you then? I mean, if she's intimidated, why are you intimidated? And after that tirade, Boris just fell apart. He was playing with a bad hamstring, but he committed numerous unforced errors like that backhand called wide. McEnroe won the first set 6-4. Mac, as always, challenged his opponent at the net. He's still got those soft hands. McEnroe's serve also. It had the power it had a decade ago. That's the ace. The crowd on Mack's side throughout this match. Once again, McEnroe to the net. And that is well deep. McEnroe takes the second set, 6-3. And now serving for the match. That ball is wide, and McEnroe wins the third set, 7-5. The first win for McEnroe over Becker in seven years. Stunning the crowd, stunning Becker, winning in straight sets. McEnroe found out yesterday he had been left off the Olympic team. Today, he took it out on Boris Becker. He said after a while that he could tell Boris was his. You could see that he was uh, getting frustrated, and, and, uh, and, he, and he wasn't able to do what he normally had done against me in the recent past. So now, what awaits Johnny Mack? Well, this much we know. As you just saw, he will face Emilio Sanchez in the next round. He's 3-0 and lifetime against him. After that, it'll either be David Wheaton or Wayne Ferreira in the quarters. And looking even further down the road, if he keeps winning and they keep winning, it could be Stefan Edberg or Yvonne Lendl in the semis. Now, winning is something his little brother Patrick did not manage today. He was bounced in five sets by Andrei Chesnikov. As you now know, Edberg, Lendl, Wheaton, and Sanchez all advanced to the fourth round. As far as the women are concerned, everything went true to form, as far as the seeds are concerned. All the seeded players victorious, including the top seed, Monica Seles, who allowed Yayuk Basuki of Indonesia to win two games. We invite you to join us down under tomorrow night. ESPN's live coverage of the Australian Open begins 8.30 to 11.30 Eastern Time. Don't ask me what that is in Australia, but we do know we will have extended highlights of the McEnroe-Becker match. Join Cliff, Fred, and Mary live. Welcome back. There are no games scheduled tonight in the National Hockey League. Back to work tomorrow afternoon, but only for 22 of the chosen few. Tomorrow, it is the 43rd annual All-Star Game. As Steve Cyphers tells us, it's a time to show off, light the lamp, and turn back the clock. What's in All right. All right, Stephen, if you're in the Philadelphia area this weekend, as he will be, and you're thinking about catching the festivities in person, uh, take a good look at this and check your wallet for a mere 30 bucks. A mere 30 bucks, you can catch the old-timers game tonight, as well as the skills competition. As for the actual game itself, well, that'll cost you 60 bucks. You thought you paid too much last year and the year before. Well, you did. Now let's get back to last night, featuring not one, but two penalty shots. In Hartford, the Whalers' John Cullen misses the opportunity here, can't cash in. As he misses the net, Andy Moog comes up with the save. The Bruins win 4-3 in overtime. Paul Broughton of the Rangers moves in, deeks, and beats Mike Vernon. The Rangers go on to win it 6-4. to four. Welcome back. Let's talk NBA news now. The Clippers will have to make the best of it for at least the next 10 days. Without Doc Rivers, their starting point guard. Rivers strained a hamstring in last night's loss to Seattle, the latest in a series of injuries this season for Rivers that have allowed him to play in just 31 of 39 16 games. seasons. Jim Rice made a living with his bat for the Red Sox. And now that he's retired, he'll do the same. Rice has been hired by the Red Sox to be their roving minor league hitting instructor. 
Rice hit 382 homers in his 16 Major League seasons in Boston. Meanwhile, Braves right-hander Pete Smith is about to sign up for 1992. Today, he avoided arbitration by agreeing to a one-year contract worth $385,000. Now, that's a $20,000 raise despite the fact that he went 1-3 and three last season with a 5.06 ERA in just 14 games. He spent most of the season on the DL. Back in 1983, catcher Rick Dempsey was the World Series MVP with the Orioles. Now he's 42, and he's heading back to Baltimore. Dempsey's been invited to the Birds' spring training camp to give it another shot as a non-roster player. He was released after last season by the Brewers. Dempsey called it a great feeling, like coming home again. One of Dempsey's former teams, the Dodgers, announced that three more of their guys have come to terms. First baseman Todd Benzinger, left-hander John Candelaria, and infielder Lenny Harris all agreeing to one-year contracts. Benzinger and Candelaria will make over a million bucks apiece. Harris had to settle for a mere 800.